Hello everyone, um, I'll be going over problem 28 from homework 5. Uh, the problem is given is a block diagram and you have to find the transfer function for this block diagram. Now you can solve it using uh, the reduction method or you can also solve it using Mason's rule. Um, I'm going to be showing the solution for this problem using Mason's rule and for that you're going to need a flowchart diagram. To make the flowchart diagram, uh, it's very simple. Uh, let me explain how to do it. So you start with your first point, which is going to be like on your left hand side, uh, R of S. Um, and then you can, it, it helps to label um, your block diagram. Um, you can name them 1, 2, I, I just lay them V1, V2. So at this point, uh, where you see that it kind of branches out, um, I named it V1. Uh, try to think uh, like you're solving or doing nodal. Um, you will see what, why I'm saying this. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I have cold, so I'll be coughing maybe throughout this video. Um, then you have your V2, V3, and V4. Um, the reason why we have uh, these labels is to help us uh, make the diagram or the flowchart easier. Um, now, for some people, uh, it's very easy to just look at the block diagram and just kind of solve it, but it takes a lot of practice to get there. Uh, but using this method, uh, it will make uh, doing or getting there faster or easier, however you want to say it. Um, so, okay, let's just get back to the problem. So, once you um, have RFS, then you have your V1, so your second circle is going to be V1, third circle is going to be V2, uh, and then after that is V3, which is right here, and then you have V4, so uh, this will be V4, and last would be your output, which is CS. Uh, once you do that, uh, so this straight line, you can draw arrows through it just to show that this is your forward path, and then you start labeling it. So first label, uh, when you see from R of S to V1, so what do we have? Uh, we just have this junction here, and we don't see any uh, blocks here, so we can just name them one for now. And next one, if you look from V1 to V2, which is V1 to V2, what do you see in between? You see S, so we're going to name this S. Then you look for from V2 to V3, and what do you have? You have another S, so we're going to put another S right over here. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Moving from V3 to V4, uh, what do we have? Uh, we do not have a block, so what we will do is we will put another one. And then from V4 to CS, we have 1 over S, and then we'll put another 1 over S over here. Now, um, we have completed our forward path, which means um, all the blocks that comes in the straight line, uh, we have labeled them. Now, we'll start with the loops. So, let's start with V1. So, at V1, what do we see? We see that we have 1 over S, which goes from V1 to V3. So what we would do is go to our V1 and draw a line to V3 and label that positive 1 over S because it's positive. Next, uh, we're going to look at our other loop. Um, and let's see what we... All right, so let's go to V4. And... <laughs> At V4, we see that this goes back to V1, and it's negative. So we'll go at V4 and draw a line and label that negative 1. Then we look at CS, and there's another loop which is going back. And we go to CS and go back to V1, and this is going to be our negative S. Now, once you have your flow chart or flow diagram made, then you can start writing some equations for it. So, 
for my forward path, I have labeled that as P1, and I have my P1 right here. Um, and for my forward path, uh, you're just going to go straight from RS to CS and label um, all the, um, you can say, variables or blocks or items that you have listed. So I have 1, S, S, 1, and 1 over S. So this is going to be my 1 path, which goes straight without any obstructions is a straight now for this for the next forward path we have to see other combinations and we can see from rfs that uh, we have another combination in our forward path so we go one and then we go above and then we see one over s we come to v3 now we skip this s and s you have to skip it because you're going above it or over it. So once you do that, next is 1 and 1 over S. So that's going to be our second forward path. So it's 1, 1 over S, 1, 1 over S. Now you can simplify it. So um, forward path 1 will become S squared times 1 over S gives you S. And the second forward path gives you 1 over s times 1 over s results in 1 over s square. Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, I'm going to take a little break. Uh, let me get back to it. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I have to excuse myself to take care of my coffee situation. So, um, getting back to where we were. Um, and... For individual loops, um, what do we have to do? Um, I named them L1. Um, naming them is not that important. Um, it's what you're doing with it is. So um, I'm going to name that L1. And to do this, uh, we have to look at our forward path and then follow um, the lines that's coming back to one of the points on your forward path. So to begin with, uh, let's start with the first loop, which is right here in V4. Um, now, our individual loops are also going to have some combinations. Um, and you, the way uh, you can predict that earlier is by looking at your forward paths. So uh, I'll, I'll, let's see how that works. So <clears throat> you have 1, S, S, 1. And then at V4, this comes back to V1, making that a loop. If you, uh, I hope you can see what I'm trying to point out, that if you start, it, start from here, go up to v4 and then this line comes back connecting this and making that as big a loop so that's how it would become 1s s1 and the reason we have this negative one here is because if you see right here let me go back if you see right here it goes from uh, V3 and it connects back in here with a negative sign and that's why we put a negative one for this so what other individual loops do we have um, so we have L2 uh, 1 times 1 over s um, the reason why is from our forward path so now we're taking this route to go over and this is going to be 1, 1 over s, 1, and coming back here, we go back with negative 1. And that's why it would give us 1, 1 over s, 1 times negative 1. Now, another combination that we have um, is going to be for this big loop. So that is going to be 1, s, s, 1, 1 over s, and then it comes back with the negative s. And I'll... I'm assuming you already know that we're going to have one more 
um, individual loop, which is going to be 1, 1 over s, 1, 1 over s, and then it comes back over here. So you would have 1, 1 over s, 1, 1 over s times negative s. And this would give us our individual loops. So once we have that, then we're going to have uh, our non-individual loops. And so what is non-individual loops? Um, because for this case, we don't have any. Um, your non-individual loops are the loops that are not touching your forward path. So how do I tell that um, I have non-individual loops? So you look at your individual loops that you just did, and you look at where they're connecting. And if you see, we have uh, two feedback loops, negative one, negative s, and they both um, come together at the same point. So that's what that's what makes them non-individual loops. So if you look in this equation, this uh, this is for your delta equation, which is going to be one minus the sum of your individual loops plus the product of your non-individual loops. Um, for this particular problem, we don't have non-individual loops, so that's why this is zero. Um, if you have any, you're gonna have them here, like if this is L1 plus L2, L plus three, and so on, that will be L1 times L2 times L3 times, and so on. So moving forward the problem. So since we have zero for our non-individual loop, um, just simply um, do a little algebra. So you have one minus, and as we know, uh, in our loops we have feedback, uh, which gives us the negative. So that's why you're gonna have these negative signs in there. And you can bring the negative out, giving you the form of one plus uh, s squared plus one over s plus s squared plus one over s. Now, once you have the delta, you should be able to compute for your transfer function, which is simply your forward path times uh, your your delta one plus uh, delta two. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh man, this cop's killing me. Um, P1 delta 1, P2 delta 2. Um, your delta 1 and delta 2 um, are going to be uh, same as, um, they're going to equate the same as the your forward path. So if there are four forward paths, there's going to be delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, and delta 4. And <coughs> for this case, <laughs> excuse me, is going to be one <coughs> so if you multiply them together we would get s plus one over s square and in the denominator we would have all this over here um, if you do a little bit um, algebra you would see that you would um, end up with s cubed plus one over two s to the fourth plus s square plus two s um, I hope this video helped you. Um, thank you for watching.